Hello and welcome to part two of Designing Kicks in the Grid. In the first episode, we talked about sample uh, pitching, mangling, mixing, adding clicks on top and so forth. Uh, this tutorial is completely independent of that, so you don't need to watch part one to follow. But of course, I suggest um, you watch it if you want to benefit the most. So let's begin. Uh, here I have a grid. I have an equalizer, an oscilloscope to watch its stuff, a tuner to define the pitch of sine waves or the kick, and a tool so that I can mute when I'm talking to you and I just want to look at uh, some frequency spectrums. So let's begin. First, we're going to switch this out to a segments, which uh, is a more powerful envelope, so to speak. Create a very simple shape. We're going to tune this. Uh, uh, further than at the end. Turn off smoothing by clicking on this button. Switch it to eight notes. We never want to be one kicks to be longer than uh, an eight note or halfway through to the next kick. And then switch it also to, uh, let me zoom a little bit more. Switch it also to one shot mode. Okay. And now rename this to uh, master envelope. Okay. Now, we can duplicate this and actually use the second instance as an amplitude envelope. So rename it. But like in the last tutorial, we want to switch this to a curves, which is an LFO, turn off, turn off fade reset. And the reason why we're doing this is because we want to control the phase. So bear with me. Grab an attenuator. Drop it in here after the oscillator. Set its volume to zero and modulate it to the full extent with our amp envelope LFO. Now, okay, let's duplicate the master envelope again. Uh, rename it to Amplitude Envelope Amp Envelope Phase Control. And now hook up the modulation output to the phase input and modulate 100%. So to start with, that's all we need. Just a straight line, but I already know where we're going to go. We, we're going to bend it in a certain direction. Yeah, something like this. And what this ensures is that we have more control or a better resolution at the very beginning of the kick where most of the information is located. It's where the, the pitch pitches down from, I don't know, 10,000 hertz to uh, the fundamental, and it is just a good idea, in my opinion, to have a bit more control over what's happening in this area. You will see later on what what that means. So um, now that this is set up, let's change this oscillator to a sine wave. Okay, and also we want the oscillator to begin to trigger at a zero crossing. It is not that important, but my reference kick does. And since I want to model it after my reference kick, I want to do the same thing. So go up here, grab a shift module, modulate the phase 100%, and then enter 25% here, which brings us exactly to here where the zero crossing is happening. And to modulate the pitch, we're going to use the same combination of LFO and segments. So we can just select these and duplicate them. And hook up the modulation output to control the pitch. And well, probably not the maximum is needed, but for now, let's start with the maximum modulation. Turn off uh, pitch tracking. So now it will always play a sine wave at C3. This is the default. Um, we could track it, but um, I don't do this because usually when I want to change something in the pitch, I want to change the fundamental of the kick drum. I do not want to change uh, the attack and uh, decay phase, if that makes sense. 
So we have to pitch it down first into a region which is more suitable for kick drums. So, and when I pitch it down 24 semitones, uh, we are now at C1, which oscillates, what do I have here? Oh, C2 actually. C2, which oscillates at 65 hertz. This is still a bit high. And let's start with a fundamental of, let's pick an F1. So, and this is C2, so we have to pitch down seven semitones from here to minus 31, which should give us an F. F1 is, which is 43.5, around 43.5 Hertz, which is perfect uh, to begin with. So now let's start pitching this sine wave. Increase the modulation to 127 tones, which is just the maximum. And now, yeah, let's start with something like this. This starts at, I don't know how many hertz, and then pitches down to the fundamental. And it sounds like this. Yeah, which is of course not yet what we want, but we can already see that, yeah, it's going in that general direction. So. Let's introduce some more dots here. First, we want to maybe not start at the maximum. We want to pitch down relatively fast at the beginning. And then the closer we go to zero, the, the less we need to pitch. So we just need a few dots here. This won't sound great yet, great yet. But yeah, this is already um, kind of a lot better. So this is just roughly the form you get when you uh, set the curve up like this. It's just something I know by heart by now because I've done it many times. Uh, but now the, the whole kind of tweaking begins. And I struggled to find out how, how would I explain it to you the best? I mean, because it's just so much trial and error. So eventually I came up with an idea. And it goes as follows. I imported a uh, kick from a kick library, which I think sounds pretty decent. Um, let's uh, listen to it real quick. Well, I think this can uh, serve as a pretty decent reference now, but how do we profit from that? So when we uh, look at the oscilloscope, let me resize it a little bit. Uh, we see the sine wave, which is basically our kick right now. I see that the phase is random, which is something I want to correct right away. Uh, you want to click here to enable phase retrigger whenever a MIDI note is triggering the input. Okay, that's already a lot better. But now um, I have a second input here, and this is the one I will use as a reference. I have here the... BP kick, um, BP for blueprint. And now we see them uh, nice and neatly overlaid. And now what I did is just kind of try to follow this amplitude curve of my reference kick. So I'll probably speed it up here a bit and let me do that real quick. So now that took a while, but um, I took time to adjust it as much as possible to, to, to match the original. Now let's just listen to it real quick. Okay, that sounds already quite different from uh, before. And now let's do the same thing, the exact same thing, but this time we match uh, the pitch curves. We, we want to kind of overlay the sine waves so that they line up perfectly. Uh, again, I will speed this up, so just bear with me. Okay, now let's adjust the amplitude envelope a little bit. Okay, now they almost perfectly overlap, so 
let's let's see what we just designed or listen to so let's listen to what we just designed okay that's not exactly perfect and i see that you know we ha maybe have some issues at the beginning Well, it also sounds different because it has some kind of click sample overlaid, which we will uh, apply later. But for now, we have a pretty decent uh, kind of approximation to, to our reference. Okay, now let's let's start EQing a little bit. And there's a very simple trick which most of the time works, not always, but most of the time. If you look at the frequency spectrum, there are a few uh, peaks and dents. And I found out that kicks that sound good usually kind of have a very gradual slope. So let's just remove those those little dents that we have here and make it a straight line and see what how that influences the sound as you can see I know I did this without uh, listening and now let's let's see how it influences the sound Well, in this case, I actually like this little dip here. Yeah, because it actually sits exactly at a, a one of the problem frequencies. Yeah, it's around 240 hertz. And we also have this nasty little click at the end that we still kind of have to take care of. Uh, okay, uh, there is an issue. I think it's a bug. I'm not sure though, because it's, it is actually displaying it that way. This is an LFO and actually at the end, at the very end of the curve, it sets back, it goes back to, to the beginning, to the, to the value that we have here. If you look at, at it in an oscilloscope, you can see that this is actually what happens. A little work around, so kind of a, kind of a fix is to remove the modulation to uh, remove reduce the modulation to 99 percent yeah now it sounds better but I mean, it's not always always uh, visible sometimes you know the waveforms look great but you still get these kind of clicks or whatnot it's just something you have to do uh, by ear. Now, of course, we can go on and tweak this kick until it sounds exactly the same like the other one. This is just a rough approximation. And there are two things I usually do. One is I manipulate this curve a little bit because that determines how we run through the amplitude envelope. Uh, sorry, not the amplitude envelope. Thou shalt rename thy modules. Uh, this is the pitch envelope. Okay, now I can change the characteristics of the kick by just changing how it runs through its phase.
And this is sometimes simpler than going here and kind of tweak this entire rather complex shape that you have here. You can also tilt it in a certain direction. Well, of course, now it jumps back to the beginning, which is not what we want. It's actually exactly the problem that I was talking about. But this is, this is an interesting way of uh, playing with it and get some different sounds without doing much. And uh, of course, do the same thing here with the amplitude envelope. And another thing you can do is use kind of a bend and, for example, a pinch module. And when you put them here and you draw curves, this, while this uh, affects the face, this will, no, the bend modules and the pinch module will affect how you run through uh, the pitch. So it only needs very fine adjustments, but uh, often this is exactly the kind of modulation you still need to, to tweak your kick to uh, exactly what uh, it eventually then uh, needs to be. So, I mean, anyway, this tutorial is not about designing the best kick uh, in the universe. Unfortunately, it is just kind of a lot of work and tweaking and moving these dots around. But I think this blueprint method gets you to an approximation rather quickly. And it also helps you in kind of, you know, kind of learn how these shapes look like when you take two or three or four different kicks and approximate them. It, it just teaches you quickly, you know, how, how good kicks sound and in this case uh, look like. And of course, now that we have this, uh, we wanted to create the ultimate kick tool. This, at least that's what I claimed at the beginning of the last tutorial. So what we can do now is take this entire thing, hit Command C, or just copy it, go over to the Kick Factory, that's how I named it, we already have, and just drop it in. And instead of using a separate out, plug it into the mixer. And uh, now, well, maybe mute the samples. Of course, need to move the media region. And now we can further process it. We can, yeah, fade between oscillator and uh, these kicks. We can add clicks. We can do pretty much, we can do pretty much everything. Okay, this sums it up. I hope you like it. I hope you like your uh, new kick factory. I mean, you need some time to get used to and get really, really great results. But I think this is it's quite comprehensive and should deliver the results uh, you want eventually when you spend some time with it. That being said, thanks for watching and peace out.